In this tutorial, I will show you how to build a hydrophone to record underwater. Making your own is very easy and cheap using basic piezo elements. I wanted to focus on how to make the piezo sound better, and for that, we're going to see how to build a preamp that will be connected to the piezo to amplify its signal. We're going to go through all the steps um, to build the circuit, and we will see how to connect the other elements, the piezo and the XLR cable, to the preamp. Final step will consist of building a nice waterproof container to fit everything inside. We want to have both the piezo and the preamp in the same box. The closer they are, the more we prevent noise from entering the circuit. To build this preamp, I followed uh, Zach Boff's uh, schematics, uh, inspired by Alex Rye's piezo preamplifier. You can find a link to his article in the description box, as well as the components we're going to use for this build. First, let's go through all the elements we're going to use for the preamp. So we have three FET transistors. FET stands for Field Effect Transistor and their reference is 2N3819. We have four 3 megohm resistors, one 150 ohm resistor, another resistor of 1.5k ohm, and three film capacitors of 220 picofarad 50 volts or greater rating. We will need a perf board to attach these elements to a piezo, foil tape with conductive adhesive for the piezo's ground, a male XLR connector, a balanced cable, and soldering material, a soldering iron, solder, and wires. Let's take a look at Zakpov's schematic. First thing we can notice is that each type of component has its own symbol. For instance, resistors are represented like this. Capacitors like this. And transistors have this symbol. Transistors have three pins. In order to properly identify each pin, flat side should be facing down and from left to right it goes drain, gate and source. These components are polarized, resistors and capacitors aren't. Now we can read the schematic and see that our preamp has uh, one, two and three transistors, four 3 megohm resistors, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1.5k resistor, 150 ohm resistor, and 3 capacitors, 1, 2, and 3. They're connected to the piezo and XLR, which are represented in, on the circuits. We have piezo 1, piezo 2, and piezo ground, XLR 1, XLR 2, XLR 3. I'll break this down later, but for now, let's focus on the preamp. I first tried it on a breadboard. So for those who have a breadboard and who are patient enough to test it before the building and soldering, go for it. Otherwise, you can start directly with the perf board. When placing the elements, the challenge is to optimize the space and make sure the soldering is coherent and doesn't compromise the logic of the circuit. Um, we're going to start by placing the elements in the center to make sure we have enough room for all the components. 
Uh, in Zach Puff's article, there's a nice drawing by Greg Perra, which seems like one of the best ways to place the elements on the perf board. I could have followed uh, Greg Perrin's drawing, but some of the resistors I bought were bigger um, than the ones he used, so I had to adapt it. We're going to start placing the elements on the board, and we will use uh, this side of uh, the perf board uh, as the other side with metal pads is used for soldering the elements together. And we will start with the central elements, which are uh, the transistors. So like Greg Perrin's drawing, uh, we will place them in different directions to optimize the soldering. So the first one will have its flat side facing up. The second one, flat side facing down. The third one, flat side facing right. Then we have uh, the three megohm resistors, one here, another one right under it here, third one will be placed here, and the last one here. Um, then we have the 1.5k resistor between the 3 megohm resistors, the 150 ohm um, resistor will be here, right next to it we have a capacitor and another capacitor right under this 3 megohm resistor and the last capacitor will be somewhere in this area. I used tape to keep all the elements in place before drawing on the back how we're gonna solder them. Uh, Greg Perrin's drawing includes both um, the front and the back of the circuit, which makes it pretty easy if you place the elements exactly like he did. In my case, like I said earlier, I had to adapt the placement to the size of the components I got, and I used Photoshop to invert the back of the circuit and draw it again to have both sides on the same image. I find it visually uh, easier this way, and as this might be helpful, I will include it in the description box. So we are finally ready for some soldering. The circuit is now soldered. To help our piezo and preamp, I chose an electrical uh, junction box, which is not only watertight but also has these access points. These are soft rubber bunks. I picked one to make a hole for the microphone cable to go through. Here we have the piezo. I just soldered the wires with the inner circle carrying the positive signal. The brass part the negative signal. I fixed it on foil tape with conductive adhesive to solder a wire for the ground as we're going to connect it to a balanced cable. I soldered the cable to the male XLR connector with hot wire going to pin 2 
cold wire going to pin 3 and the ground to pin 1. I recommend checking Jenny Berger Meyer tutorial on nuts and bolts on how to make a DIY instrument. She explains very clearly what is a balanced cable, how to build the piezo and how to solder the cable to the connector. She used a jack connector. In my case, I will use an XLR connector as we want the circuit to be phantom powered. Let's now solder the piezo and the cable to the circuits and let's take a look at the drawing again. Here we have XLR1, XLR2, XLR3, piezo 1, piezo 2 and piezo ground. Before you seal the box, connect your hydrophone to a mixer and check whether it works. I wrap the piezo in foil tape before gluing it to the lid and we're going to use PVC glue to make sure the box is totally waterproof. Before applying it, I used sandpaper to scratch the surface and clean it to improve glue adhesion. We need to seal the hole for the cable as this is the most likely place water will try to enter the capsule. PVC glue can't work on the rubber part, so I used a super strong glue for all types of materials. Don't forget to seal the cable hole on both sides, inside the box and outside. Once it's totally dry, all that is left to do is pop it in water and test it out.